What's going on you guys? Welcome back to part two of this torque converter on a BT200X. And as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted by this incorrectly sized crankshaft, the first thing we're gonna do now is attach this chain to our torque converter assembly. And what I'm gonna do in order to do that is buzz these bolts back off. I'm just gonna kind of shift the engine a little bit, pull the chain over this shaft here, take this off so you can get a little bit better view here. The chain is gonna go right there, so I'm just gonna kinda, I'm gonna take this off the engine, adjust it a little bit so that I don't have to remove links from the chain. Just a little bit of a shortcut, but if you don't mind removing links, that'll work just as well. So let's get that going. Now, it's also important to remember, not important to remember, but important to note that there is a little key that goes inside of this assembly. It's a little something like this. You need to make sure that that key stays, whoops, stays on your shaft here. Otherwise, this shaft is not gonna work for you. But yeah, just make sure this key stays in place once you get everything reattached. All right, so our chain is now on, and all we're gonna do to get that to the tension that we want is your engine should still be loose at this point. You don't wanna screw these in just yet. And you can kinda of adjust your engine a little bit to get that tension set. You can see as I kinda of move the engine around, it's pulling or adding slack to our chain there. So that's this side. You just wanna add all of this right back on the way you took it off, it's pretty simple. Maybe I'll do it one hand here, let's find out. Let's reattach this onto here and slide it in over that key and we will be good to go. Okay, so we now have our crankshaft adapter and also on this crankshaft adapter, try to put it in here. You'll notice on this one, it's only gonna go in one way. It won't go in both ways. So once you get it lined up here and slide it on, what you're also gonna notice is it's a little bit too long I would guesstimate that's probably about a half inch too long. So what I'm gonna do is make a mark on this. I'm gonna cut off this extra. So you can see in there, there's a little bolt hole on the inside of the original crankshaft in there. And we're gonna need to get to that to secure this torque converter in place. So I'm gonna try to get this cut off as neatly as I can. And hopefully this will all work out. Okay, so I'm gradually making progress on this. I did manage to shear that adapter off a little bit. Um, you actually don't need this key. I wasn't really thinking that through very well. Um, all of these parts you can see here, they kind of have the key built into them. But I can't say I'd recommend doing this as things are right now. Um, as you can see, I really beat the crap out of this plate here. Um, using the adapter that I purchased, and I imagine this would be true for most other adapters just because they're not you know, very precise. Um, this is a very, very tight fit here. If you do decide to do this, I definitely recommend putting lots and lots of grease on both the adapter and the crankshaft here. Uh, that should hopefully help you avoid having to do a lot of this beating that I've done. Hopefully this is still gonna work okay by the time I'm done. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't really have my hopes too high on that, but hopefully this is all gonna go okay. Um, all I've done so far is attach this adapter plate and this little, uh, I guess you call it maybe a pulley extender here. This is what the belt's probably gonna grab onto, I would assume. Uh, and then up next, I'm gonna add this plate onto the top and hopefully add the belt and get this all tightened down, assuming everything goes smoothly. So let's give that a shot and see what happens. Okay, so one way or the other, I did manage to get this kit installed. If you can't tell by the fact that I'm out of breath and the tone of my voice, I would not recommend doing this ever. So I ended up getting, like I said, the rest of the kit installed. After adding that, whoa, that exposure is too high. There we go. After adding that uh, last piece of the pulley setup that I mentioned just a second ago, um, everything did go together fairly well. But what I had to do is take on this side, take all of those pulleys back off after I just hammered them on there, which almost didn't happen. I had to get my wife to actually help me. We had to stick two screwdrivers, one on either side of the pulley and just start beating on it and hope it didn't snap that crankshaft. And eventually we did get it off. 
And I had to do that because on the back of that pulley, there's actually a spacer that you have to add between the engine seal around the crankshaft and that pulley that I installed. So if you decide to do this, be sure you do that first off because, oh my gosh, that was a pain getting that off. <laughs> so um, after I pulled that off, I added that bushing, I put all the pulleys back on, and the results I got were actually kind of unexpected. With this torque converter, what I expected and what I'm sure most people expected is kind of kind of the norm. When you add a torque converter to these bikes and you take off the centrifugal clutch, usually what happens is your acceleration drastically increases, but your top speed is usually going to decrease a little bit or at least not get any better. But on this bike, what I experienced <clears throat> excuse me, was actually the exact opposite. Um, with the centrifugal clutch, this bike would take off and accelerate so fast it would almost kind of throw you off. But when I added the uh, torque converter here, it actually doesn't do that anymore. Now it still takes off more than quick enough, but it actually, it doesn't kind of, you know, buck and try to throw you off the same way that it used to. And oddly enough, as I mentioned in part one, my top speed on this bike was 31 miles per hour. Now it's actually 35, and that's really without pushing it very hard. Um, I hope at least that info is helpful to you guys, because that was, I, I couldn't, I don't necessarily understand it, and it's kind of hard to believe, to be honest, that the top speed would increase like that. So if you are thinking about trying to speed up your bike a bit and you, you don't mind spending, you know, three days setting something like this up, um, it may not be a bad kit for you. I bought this one on eBay for about $65. Um, you can also order them from other websites online. They're a little bit higher quality. They go for around $200. Uh, but the key thing with those is they're going to have a warranty and they actually come with the engine spacers. Mine, as you saw in part one, actually just made the spacers out of washers. But realize that this kit is not built for this bike and you're going to come into a lot of problems. Uh, the angle grinder I mentioned in part one finally came in the mail and I had to use the angle grinder on the actual crankshaft of the engine because I could not get that, uh, that, that adapter sleeve to fit on properly. So we did have to kind of buff down the crankshaft of the engine just a little bit. And I kind of had to buff at the end of the crankshaft as well. You know, the end of the crankshaft is supposed to be nice and flat. I had to curve it just a little bit to get these pulleys to fit on for some reason, which again, none of that necessarily makes sense to me. You'd think if it's a, a, a three quarter inch pulley, it would fit on a three quarter inch adapter. But for some reason that adapter just isn't perfectly cut, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it kind of depends on what you're wanting. This is definitely not a kit for everybody. I like it. It was a giant pain in the butt, but I'm certainly not going to take it off. It, it is, you know, it's kind of, it's a whole new bike now and I actually really enjoy it. So that's kind of my final thoughts on this. No, no increase in acceleration, an additional four miles per hour though. So pretty interesting to me. So that's going to be the end of this series until I get that video done of uh, this bike running after I fix the chain. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you really like this video, be sure to give it a like. If you loved it, maybe consider, excuse me, maybe consider subscribing. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.